Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Remote Access VPN CLI Learning Byte. All right, so let's jump straight to the example. And in this example, we have a few different devices I want to talk about. First, we have SRX1, which is the device we will be configuring here. And Server1 is directly connected to it. And then SRX1 connects to the internet. Now, the server is in the server zone and the internet is in the untrust zone. And then on the internet, we have the remote worker who needs to access server one. And so we're going to do that by setting up a remote access VPN. And to do that, we are going to use the NCP exclusive remote access client, and that's going to allow access to server one. Now, this needs to be able to handle a remote worker's IP address changing to whatever it's going to be, and that's part of the remote access VPN. And then all user traffic should go through the VPN, so no split tunneling. And then we're going to use the CLI to configure this. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get this started. All right, so here is the CLI of SRX1. And one thing I do want to point out is this is the SRX I'm using for my home internet connection. So you might see a little extra config here and there, and that's just because I'm actually using this for more than just a lab device. So keep that in mind. Okay, so with that, let's jump into configuration. And let's go to the access hierarchy. And we need to configure a few different things. The first thing we need to configure is an address assignment pool. And the thing to keep in mind here is one thing that we're doing here, and I didn't explain this earlier, and I should have, is that this configuration doesn't include a radius server. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there's a few different reasons. First of all, if you use the setup that uses a radius server, that also uses certificates and that adds complications. And so you may not want to deal with certificates. And also, you know, this is a perfect setup if it's a small deployment. Say it's a, a small office or something like that, just a small company doesn't need to manage hundreds or thousands of remote users, then yeah, this is a great setup. If you're managing hundreds or thousands of remote users, then yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing this. You want to get a radius server involved and certificates, but this works for this type of setup. So let's go ahead and configure this pool. So first we need to set the subnet that we are going to use. This is the subnet that we're going to hand out addresses to the remote access workers to use the tunnel. So we're going to hand out IP addresses from that network range. And then we do have to specify at least a DNS server. Right, so next we need to define an access profile. Need to go up one more. And here is where we're going to define those users. Remember, we are not using a radius server, and so we do need to specify the users locally. NCP dash user one. Now the thing to keep in mind here case matters. So the fact that we capitalized NCP here matters. If we don't capitalize that when we set up the VPN on the client side, as far as the user, it's going to cause problems. And we're setting this password for the user as lab123. And then we have to set the address assignment pool of the pool that we just created. And so that is the access configuration that takes care of the users, the pull information and things like that. Okay, so next let's create the ST0 interface. Even though this is a remote access VPN, it's still not a policy-based VPN. If you remember with the dynamic VPNs, those are policy-based VPNs, which you don't have to define an ST0 interface for. But here with this VPN, we do. And we're defining unit one. I'm already using unit zero. So let's use unit one in that regard. And let's go ahead to the untrust security zone. We have just that external interface configured. So we'll need to configure some host inbound traffic for system services. Basically, we need to enable IKE. This will allow the client on the remote worker to initiate the tunnel. And then we also need to put the ST0.1 interface in a security zone. Now I'm going to put it in the untrust zone, but 
that's not absolutely necessary. And you can put it in its own zone, such as a specific VPN zone. And that does give you some additional flexibility because you can define security policies to allow traffic in and out of that zone. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to put it in that untrust zone. Now, another thing I do want to point out, if you were to put the ST0.1 interface in its own zone, you would not need to enable any sort of host inbound traffic services in that zone. But here we have IKE enabled, but IKE will be necessary for the GIGI002 interface. So keep that in mind. It's not necessary for the ST0.1 interface with this configuration. All right, so let's continue. Let's go to the IKE configuration, and we'll start with a proposal. Now we're going to set the authentication. If I can type, there we go, authentication method to pre-shared keys. Now, if we were using certificates, obviously we wouldn't do this, but with this setup, we are using pre-shared keys. Let's set the Diffie-Hellman group to group 19. Set the authentication algorithm to SHA-256. And then set the encryption algorithm to AES-256 CBC. Let's go up one and configure the policy. Now we need to set the mode to aggressive. So this is going to be using Ike version one aggressive mode. Set the proposal we just configured. And then we configure the pre-shared key in ASCII text. We're going to set that to Juniper123. And we need to configure a gateway Here we need to set the policy we just configured. Let's configure some dynamic configuration. We're going to use the user at host name. Call this LB, user at lb.net. Then also we need to configure the Ike user type to shared IKE. Now we have the option to do group IKE ID. And if you do that, that will cause the tone not to establish with this type of configuration. So keep that in mind. Then we need to set the external interface, it's going to be GIGI002. We also need to set the AAA profile that we configured earlier, the access profile. And then it's good to specify the version. It will use version 1 with our current setup, but it doesn't hurt to say version 1 only. Now let's configure an IPsec proposal. And here, let's configure the encryption algorithm to be AES-256-GCM. And then we can configure the policy. And we'll configure perfect forwarding secrecy, PFS. We're going to use group 19 again. Then we're going to set the proposals that we're using to that proposal we configured. We need to configure the VPN. And we set the bind interface of the ST0.1 interface that we configured. Set the Ike information, gateway, RA, NCP, GW. And we can also configure the, or set the IPsec policy we just configured. Now with remote access VPNs, you have to configure traffic selectors, even if you aren't doing split tunneling. And in this regard, we are not doing split tunneling. And so what we need to do here is specify an all zeros for local and remote. Okay, last but not least, we need to configure a security policy to allow this traffic. So from zone untrust to zone servers, we are going to call this policy RANCP-access match source address any because we don't know the source address now the destination address we do know the destination address we're going to set that to already have server which is for server one we set an application of any set then permit and so this will allow any ip address because we know that ip address can change for the remote worker to access server one and so let's go ahead and commit that configuration okay so that commit is complete let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker device and set up the client 
Okay, so here is the remote worker device. We have the NCP exclusive entry client already opened. We need to configure a new connection profile. And we're going to manually create one. We're going to call this RA-NCP-LB for learning bytes. LAN over IP for communication media. We don't have a certificate. The tunnel endpoint. And the user IP. Remember, this is case sensitive. So the password is lab123. We are using DH19 or Diffie-Hellman 19, group 19 for PFS. And for the ID, we set this at user at lb.net. And we're not done yet, though. We do need to edit this profile and configure some additional parameters. We want to set this to aggressive mode for Ike version 1. And for the policy, we want to select the, we could create a new policy for IKE policy, or we can select the current one that is already set for pre-shared key. And we can see that here. And again, we're using Diffie Hellman group 19. And same with the IKE policy, we can set that to the predefined AES GCM 256. And then after that, we need to select the identities option. And we are using a pre-shared key. So we need to select the pre-shared key option and type in Juniper123. And that's all we need to do there. Click OK. And it selects the connection profile. So let's connect the VPN. And we can see the connection is established. And we can disconnect that. And it disconnects easily. We don't have to enter our information again to reconnect. But before we reconnect, I do want to attempt to reach that server. So here I have the server pre-configured. Let's attempt to log in. And of course, it can't reach it. Go ahead and cancel that. Then let's reconnect the VPN. And it's established. Let's go ahead and log in again. And great, no problem logging in. We can grab a file. No problem transferring a file. I do want to show one other thing. So we can reach the 10.10.20.123 server. We established that. There's another server I have that is 122. We can't reach that. We use that security policy to only allow access to that one server. All right, now that we know that tunnel is up and functioning correctly, let's go ahead and verify its functionality through the CLI. So first I want to do the run show security IKE security associations. And I'm going to specify the peers IP address since I do know that. And typically in this situation, you may or may not know that typically not but here I do so I'm just going to enter that so we can just look at that information and there's a few things I do want to point out here first of all the exchange type is set to aggressive authentication method pre-shared keys that's great we see our local address the remote address and then I want to point out the remote access client info it says exclusive client that means it's the NCP exclusive client and then we have a peer ID information of user at lb.net perfect that's what we want to see as well as our authentication algorithms. And then I want to show next the security, IPsec security associations, VPN name, RA-NCP-VPN. We can see the phase two security associations. And then lastly, I want to show the IKE active peer detail information. And that'll give us some information about that peer. And we can see what XAuth username is used. We can see the peer ID. We can see the network attributes. So we're handing out the 182.168.100.1 address, which is within that range we set, as well as additional information. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure remote access VPNs with the NCP exclusive remote access client using the CLI. And then we demonstrated how to verify remote access VPNs using the CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.